Hello, everyone. Welcome to KHM Today, your weekly resource for industry news and straight up fun. I'm your host, Matt Walgren, and I'm filling in for Carolyn Orff today, who is still recovering from the news. She found out recently that her river cruise was canceled. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure she'll be fine and she'll be back next week to tell you all about it. Um, but we, I do want to let you know we have a great show for you today. Sarah Rollins from Marketing is here and she's going to give us some great gift ideas that you might uh, recommend to your clients. Maybe you will even give them to your, your good clients or other uh, friends and family who love to travel. We have Steve Ferry from Allianz. He's going to be talking about uh, latest uh, traveler concerns with everything going on. What are the latest traveler concerns and how you can support your clients with those? And of course, um, recommending you know different uh, travel protection policies to, to alleviate their needs. And we have one of my favorites, Wanda Thomas. She recently was traveling in uh, Africa on safari, as many of you know, and she's coming with her tips on how to take your office with you while you're on the road. Many of us travel a lot as travel advisors, so sometimes it can be a little tricky taking the office with you. So she's gonna help us out with her tips on that. And then finally, I am gonna share with you my favorite holiday drink in our KHM at home segment. First, I wanna thank our sponsors, uh, Apple Leisure Group, and I just, um, I just realized I'm not sharing my screen with y'all, so let me do that too. Um, so you can see our sponsors, but Apple Leisure Group, um, uh, Travel Impressions is uh, a segment sponsor. We have uh, Celebrity Cruises, Blue Sky Tours, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Royal Caribbean, Oceana, and Delta Vacations. I'm hoping y'all can see my um, presentation here, but I guess we'll find out when we get our first um, guest on to see if y'all can see it. She'll tell me. Um, something exciting starting this uh, month on KHM today. We're giving away prizes uh, each week. Uh, this week, uh, you have to attend though, so make sure you come every show this month to win one of these cool prizes. This week is one of my favorite travel industry books, actually two of them. They're written by our very own Anita Haliasso. The One of them is How I Made a Small Fortune, uh, running a home-based travel agency. The other one, which is also really good, and I've read them both cover to cover probably two times, but this one is From Home Base to Powerhouse. And it's basically, you know, more for advanced travel agents who want to take it to the next level, but it's chock full of great ideas on how to run your business from soup to nuts. I really like the marketing and promotion section because it gives you good ideas on unique ways to, to get the word out there and promote your business. And it's just great if you wanna do a brainstorming session, you wanna promote something, maybe around a holiday, what's something I can do that's different, that's unique. And she has tons of great ideas in there for you. So one lucky winner for each of those books today. And let's go ahead and bring on Sarah Rollins with our uh, favorite travel gifts this season. And while um, we're, we're bringing her on, while we wait for her to, to join, what I want to uh, mention is if you didn't see last week's show, go back and check it out. It is on YouTube. It is um, a little bit unique in that it was pre recorded, but we had a couple of guests, very special guests, Tina Tiano, uh, talking about the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage that she recently did with Globus, and she is our Globus uh, BDM. And then Rick Zimmerman was on, and Carolyn and him went back and forth about different things going on over the past year, and it was a really interesting conversation. So if you didn't get a chance to, to, to view that, go back and view it. And hey, Sarah, welcome to Hi. the show. And do you see my screen? Because that wasn't clear to me. First time hosting, so 
you can hey, see the you know what the first time for everything and i can see your screen now <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I almost forgot to put that on. And it's funny because Carolyn had warned me. She's all, yeah, that's that's the number one thing that I uh, often forget is putting that presentation up and bringing it down. But welcome uh, and go ahead and let us know what are the best holiday travel gifts this season? Well, there's a lot out there on the market right now. And I'm filling in for our friend Ashley Newton. She was unable to make it, so she's like, hey, Sarah, you like to go shopping and stuff. What would you recommend? Um, so I just happen to think, you know, if I was a first time traveler going to Europe, I might not think about a travel converter and adapter kit. Because, I mean, if you're never traveled over there, you might be like, oh, this shouldn't work anywhere, right? If I right. have like plug in a hair dryer or something like that, you know. Um, awesome. I didn't even know that these existed until I went to Europe and I was like, oh, I'm glad I have one of those. <laughs> you know, my first time, to, funny you mentioned that because my first time to Europe, I didn't know that there was, it was my first time abroad period and I didn't know there was different ways. And that was the first thing I needed to do when I get there. I need to find an adapter kit. <laughs> I, I can't plug anything in, everything's dying. <laughs> so right. great, and great gift. We, we all know that, you know, we got to have our cell phone. We got to have all of our electrical devices so we can stay in contact with those that we love. So yeah. having that ability is just huge. Um, and talking about electronic devices, one thing that my husband absolutely loves and we do not leave home without are small earbuds that are wireless. This is perfect if you're on the plane and you want to listen to your own music or something like that. You can connect it to your phone or your other wireless devices and just enjoy your own stuff. And it's That's really awesome. great too if you have like people that stay up later versus people who go to sleep earlier. Yep. The people that you're staying with don't have to hear what you're listening to. It's and perfect. It's a great gift depending on the price point that and how much your clients are spending with you. That's might something you, you put in a gift basket or just a little goodie bag for them before they leave. Hey, here's some earbuds so y'all don't disturb each other <laughs> or while you're yes. on your flight or you know anything um yeah if it happens to be someone's first flight um one thing that you know that you have to have like for your carry-on stuff some toiletries so you have what you need just in case your luggage gets lost i really like these refillable devices that you can just squirt in your favorite shampoo that way you make sure you have that or whatever kind of liquid things you might want with you and they make them really nice now where they can give you like how many ounces it actually holds so you know for sure they can take it on the airplane awesome and then the last thing that i have which you might have some clients that have like some skin sensitivity or just might be fashionistas that want to be like, you know, out in the sun and on the beach. A packable, foldable sun hat is an inexpensive way to show that, you know, you care about your client or people that you are in your family that you want to be like, hey, let's go to the beach together um, to show that you care about their fashion, care about their health and want them to have a good time no matter where they're at and how they might be. I like uh, that it's packable and foldable. It looks like it doesn't wrinkle either. Um, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, because the hats that I, the ones I get suckered into is I, you know, when you're on the beach in Cabo or Cancun and those people come along with the sticks with the product and there's a guy with the hats and I always want to buy a hat. And so I have a couple of those hats and they're nice and they're big. But when it comes time to go home or pack them, it's like you have to wear it on the plane with you or you're just holding it around everywhere because it doesn't really fit in your luggage or you don't want to squish it. So that seems like a great alternative option for you. Right. And there's a lot of different items out there still. Like if you know a client that was supposed to be on a trip to Spain, for an example, you know, and it got canceled, maybe send them a um cheese tray that is all spanish cheeses or something like that okay. that to let them know you know 
you, we know you still want to go to Spain, but here's something to hold you over until you can get there. Yeah. One thing I used to do was um, I'd go to Cost Plus World Market because they've got all kinds of international goodies there. And I put together a gift basket. And then what I started doing because I became too busy is I would call them up and I said, hey, I need a gift basket and I want it to be for about $50. Can you put something together for me? And they'd say, sure. Uh, at least the store that I went to had great customer service. I don't know if this is something they just do anyways. And they started putting them together for me and keeping it in my, my budget. And I'd say, you know, it's going to be a UK Ireland trip. That thing, go, go get something. Um, it's going to be an Italy trip. Throw in a bottle of wine for sure there, right? And then I'd just come. It'd all be perfectly packed together. And I would just have to pay for the items. And I don't think they charged me. And I don't remember ever being charged an extra service fee for it. So it's a great way. Um, to show your clients that you care. Uh, what I love to do is bring a stack of business cards with me and I deliver it to their work. Because what inevitably yeah. happens yeah. is you come in with that gift and everybody's like, wow, this is amazing. What is this? And oh, I'm uh, so-and-so's travel advisor. I'm here to deliver it to her. Oh, wow, that looks great. I want to book my travel through you. And I, you know, I, I lose all my business cards that way, which is a good thing. So that is awesome. I didn't even know that they did that. And I was just there this weekend because. Like I said, we've been planning a trip to Europe and a trip to Japan, and we just love the cuisine and we love everything there that they have. So it's like, okay, I can get some stuff there that I can't really get elsewhere. So it's yeah. really nice. Um, and talking about going to Japan, uh, one of my favorite board games right now is called Tokaido. It's okay. about taking a vacation in Japan. Interesting. And the way you win is having the best vacation. Okay, cool. That sounds like a great game. <laughs> a good practice for travel awesome. advisors, too. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Sarah. Um, love these holiday gift ideas. If you have any holiday gift ideas uh, and you're watching on YouTube or wherever you are or just commenting live here, let us know what they are. We'd love to hear what your ideas are and we can add it to our list for next time. All right. Great. Thanks for having me, Matt. Bye. Next up is Steve Ferry with Allianz. I'm super excited to talk to him today. We've gotten several questions recently with different, you know, changing uh, travel environment and requirements. Um, one thing that I did want to get his thoughts on and your thoughts on too, and put it in the comments, section is why people get travel insurance and how that has evolved over the two years with COVID. So it seems to me that, you know, about a year ago, you know, we were deep in COVID and a lot of people might've been a little skittish in traveling and they were buying it. I feel like mainly in case they had to cancel because they thought they were going to have to cancel. And so they bought it for those reasons, but now it seems like they're buying it for different reasons. They're more concerned that they, they want to go. It seems like at least my clients, they're gung ho, they want to go, but they're worried that they're not gonna um, be, they're gonna have issues when they get there is kind of the issue. So, I kind of want to get his thoughts on that. So if we can bring Steve on, that would be great. Hopefully he's still here. I've been trying to fill in space here. You there, Steve? How are you? All right, there he is. <laughs> so what do you think about that, Steve? Um, the first question, like the, the, the different reasons through COVID and how um, it's evolved why people are getting travel protection as we, as we make our way through the pandemic. Well, you know, Matt, going back before COVID, I think it was it was more reliable on you as a travel agent that you would remind the customers the, really the importance of buying travel insurance for a lot of reasons, whether if it was travel delay, your bags are lost, or if you are uh, if you have medical issues within the family, you would want to make sure that you're covered in case you had to return home. If you get that dreaded phone call from somebody, you know, while you're traveling that you have to return home. Now, it's... I'm buying it because I want to make sure that I'm having peace of mind for 
not just those reasons, but also the additional reasons that we relate to COVID. And I wanted to remind everybody too that, you know, from the beginning of all this, going back to March of a year ago, we've we've always accommodated your customers if they had to cancel due to uh, testing positive, for example, you know, for COVID. They would be able to um, cancel, uh, request a refund through a claim just by providing proof of a positive test result. And on the flip side of that coin, we were also covering your customers that if they were on the trip and they've contracted a, a, a couple symptoms, uh, we would also cover for medical, medical transportation, and then they would also have trip interruption coverage. So that's something that we've always have covered during this. I'm not sure how many agents out there realize that. You're more than welcome to check out our website AllianceTravelInsurance.com. Click on the very top. You'll see the coverage alert section. That will kind of remind you what we're at, what we do cover. Uh, again, on Agent Max 2, you can also review that banner on the very bottom. It would also keep you updated with all the coverage alerts. In addition to that, Matt, we've also launched new endorsements to put uh, really uh, highly recommended products or benefits back into the market that would relate. Uh, to cover your customers for the epidemic and pandemic, and that would relate to an individually ordered quarantine and denied boarding. And that's based on state by state. The state had to approve it for us to put it into the market. And today we've got uh, 47 states, one more coming online next week. That will give us 48 out of the 50 states. And then the two that are left over would be New York and Washington, which are the ones that we've always had issues with on trying to have anything approved to put into their markets. So, okay, let me get into, I'd like to get into a scenario here and get your thoughts on it and get the kind of steps that you would lay out for travelers on what they should do in this scenario. So the flight is canceled. They want to return home. It's not, they're not going anywhere. This is them trying to get back home and their flight is canceled and there's not a replacement flight. And the airline has basically said, hey, we're refunding your money, but you're on your own to get back home. What should a traveler do in that scenario, step by step? Gosh, my first, my first thing, Matt, is I always try to remind everybody when we go through training classes is uh, uh, pick up the phone and phone Allianz because that way you or your customers are not trying to second guess on what they should be doing. Uh, maybe they could be, maybe they would arrange the wrong thing that might not be covered, you know, um, if, if and when they get back home and try to file a claim, but. Always remind your customers to contact Allianz when something does go wrong, whether if it's uh, in, in like Matt's uh, situation here about if a flight's canceled and they're, they're not providing any protection, and that has happened, we all know, um, call Allianz and, let, and put, put it in, into our position and say, how can you help me? Here's what's going on here. How can you help? There's a variety of different ways on how your customers can communicate with us. Um, the one cool idea out there today, depending on how um, savvy your customers are with electronics, is that we have the mobile app. And I know many of you who might be on here might have heard me talk about that on other training classes where we've talked about our mobile app, but the app can really help your customers um, communicate with Allianz. If anything, that's probably the number one priority why I would ask your customers to have this app, is to contact us, whether if it's related to uh, Matt's situation here, or if it was a medical situation. We also have all of our phone numbers are listed on the front, um, the very first page of our policy. So there should be no reason why the customers should be without phone numbers. We all know that they always reach out to you and you're not going to be available at certain times of the evening or on weekends, but that's what that's where we take over. We're there to try to assist when your customers do have these situations. Awesome. What What... What changes have in policies have there been, you know, to, to Allianz's policies now that COVID has come about? What different things have you added or maybe um, restrictive well, policies that you've taken away to improve these policies given the current um, environment? Well, normally to, to, to add anything to an existing policy, it's usually a two-year process. Um, but when we knew, uh, going back to January of a year of, of last year of 2020, there were, we knew that there were going to be things or could, there could be things that we wouldn't be able to offer 
if the, if the pandemic were to come into play. So our product team was already looking at our, our benefits and the, the, uh, the benefits that we couldn't offer under how our current policies were filed. Remember, that's the key here. They were filed a certain way before, the, before, the, uh, before COVID, so that would not allow us to pay or cover for these certain items. And, and obviously the biggie is quarantine. How are your customers gonna be protected if your customer are ordered to quarantine would not have been covered and I should say possibly because I don't want to guarantee that there's no way, but there could be some stipulations around that. But we had to go back and ask for approval for from all 50 states to be able to add this endorsement into the market. So individual ordered quarantine is number one. Denied boarding, number two. That is covering your customers if they are denied boarding an airplane or possibly a cruise ship. And if they're not allowed on due to a suspicious medical condition, uh, and uh, either the gate agent or the port authority agent is saying, look, no way you're getting on. You're going to have to wait. We'll try to see what we can do the next day or the following day. Well, we would we would provide protection uh, paid out as a travel delay benefit. Okay. Um, number three is on our classic plan only. We've doubled the medical. It went from twenty five thousand to fifty thousand dollars. And that way, that would help for those countries like Costa Rica and Turks and Caicos that are requiring proof uh, uh, prior to your arrival that your customers are bringing in $50,000 of medical coverage. Awesome. There's going to be some more things that we're tweaking right now, Matt, uh, for 2022, but those were the, the uh, mandatory things that we had to get into the market. Your customers would be receiving what's called a declaration page which is still gonna be receiving their normal policy as they would have received prior. It's not gonna show any changes in the policy, but the endorsement or a declaration page is gonna be added to the very back of that policy. And that's when it's gonna go through these changes that uh, are approved with, uh, with that particular state. Next year, we're looking at some additional things here that will launch when we completely refresh our product. There's gonna be some newer things here that um, we haven't even been told about, and I think it's because they don't want us to be able to leak it out to you just yet. But there are there are working on some things, and we'll probably find out maybe in the first quarter what those are. Okay, cool. Looking forward to uh, hearing more about that. Uh, I did want to mention a tip uh, that I'd heard before, and let me know if I've got this right. Uh, but my understanding is, if you've got travel protection and you have to cancel your flight. Uh, because you can't go, but the airline says in canceling, because sometimes they're kind of slow to it and they're not canceling flights, even though you can't get somewhere like, you know, Austria right now, right? You can't get to Austria, you can't get to Japan. Sometimes they're not canceling those flights, but you can't go because the rules say you can't as an American. Oh, and you don't want that credit. You know, they're going to give you a credit. My understanding is you can talk to the the airline and say, Hey, I don't want the credit. I'm refusing the credit. They're not going to issue a refund. But then at that point, you can make a claim on your insurance for that lost amount. And is that correct? Is that a myth, or is that something that's actually true? It's a. It's sort of a myth. <laughs> it, okay. um, let me explain. So, uh, in your situation here, when you have a, or it could be any any supplier, whether it's a cruise line, tour operator, airline. If your customers are receiving a voucher for, for traveling in the future, they have already been made whole. And that's the way the government would look at it. There's nothing, there's no loss to your customer. They still have the money. It's just tied up in a future voucher. Yes, they could uh, request uh, a claim, but they would, they would really have to wait until the claim expires. I'm sorry, the um, voucher expires before okay. they can actually process a claim for a covered reason. There are some situations here that we may be able to look at if it's medically related. I mean, a couple examples I can give you. We've had uh, customers who have passed away. We've had customers who have gotten terminally ill and not able to travel. The doctor says your days of travel are done. You're not going to be able to travel, you know, on those types of trips anymore. So, so we'd look at those on a case by case basis. So that way we would still look or ask your agents to go ahead and uh, get your customer's claim filed. It would be more of a two-step process. The claim would possibly still, and I keep saying possibly because there, we, we may change that at any time, but right now they're being denied. 
uh, as of you know December the first. They are being denied, but the second process, which 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 would be me, I have an escalation form that I can fill out and then have it sent up to get the signatures on it and get that claim paid if a customer has a future voucher. But it's got to be on a medical situation. It has to be something similar to what I just mentioned. Those things are like we're, 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 we're is, working on. The long answer is maybe, but make the claim. Uh, talk to Call Alliance, see what they can do, and file that claim to see what the options are. And I think that's some of the best advice you gave. You know, I want to tell my clients, you know, print out that paper um, with the number, Allianz's number on it, so you have it, put it in your wallet, laminate it, or put it somewhere key, take a picture of it even, put it in your phone, so you have it. Uh, you don't want to be fumbling for that or, or worrying where it's at. What if it happens to be in, in luggage that you already checked and you don't you don't have that luggage anymore? Um, keep that handy because they're going to be your resource to get you out of some of these binds and give you your options on what you can do. And like I know you've said in the past, get the get the vacation going. You know, uh, when it's when it's the opposite, when you're trying to get somewhere and there's a snag, oftentimes, and I know we've talked about this before, clients um, are like, oh, you know, I give up. Don't give up. Call the number, right. see what options there are, and you can, maybe you can still go. You hit the, you had a good point there, Matt, because that's uh, more times than not, we do find out when when customers' claims are not being paid, it's because they've prematurely pulled away from the trip too quickly and not exhausted all you know all all uh, opportunities for them to be able to continue on and that's actually written in their policy they have to make they have to exhaust all other venues before they can just walk away or um, decide to find other alternatives uh, right. and that means if, even if they have to pay out of pocket to get themselves to continue on on another carrier like let's say for like a southwest if they're on an american there's no code sharing with southwest you may have to buy a Southwest Air or a Frontier just to be able to continue on because they still have that service. Right. And um, but there's uh, we do we do find out as district directors, uh, customers who have held up claims for weeks or months or whatever. It could be because they you know what they went uh, they went around the back door or they went about went away from our rules and the rules state that you have to make every effort. You can't just decide to drop everything just because your your customers have experienced a travel delay and the flights are uh, um, at their embarkating city is now uh, delayed. Customers here in the US are a lot different than people anywhere else in the world. They don't yeah. like issues here, you know, and the conflict. And when that happens, they it feels like that they have to be in a perfect world before they can actually continue on. Try to convince your customers, if you have a, a travel delay, uh, contact all the aunts, let them know and say, here's what's going on, What? how can you help me? And that yeah. way we've already got a, a document there that you know you've already reached out to us you've already you know asked us for our assistance now we can we're, we're going to try to see what we need to do to try to get yourself back on track yeah and i think that another key thing here is you have it's not like you have to file the claim today or right away you have several right. months i think even some I, I, policies i've even think i've seen up to a year so you don't just yeah. go on your vacation um get things rolling and then make the claim later when you get back home, talk to your travel advisor and do it then. Well, it's been great talking with you, Steve. Uh, before I let you go, yep. uh, you do got to pick a number between one and 53 because we are giving away Anita Palioso's book, How I Made a Small Fortune as a Home-Based Travel Agent to One Lucky Winner. Okay, what's your number, Steve? I will go with number 52. Number 52, okay, right at the end. So uh, and we'll announce that winner towards the end of the show. So stay tuned, but that book will be coming to you. And thank you, Steve, for joining us. Um, always always enlightening to hear how to resolve some of these problems and how you're able to Thank help you us. for having me, appreciate it. Have a good holiday season. You too, happy holidays. All right, next up is my favorite, Wanda Thomas. Always has great ideas. You know, I haven't known her that long. She joined the education team not all that long ago. Uh, but when we interacted at KTA and even in our meetings, she always has the best ideas. I'm always writing them down. And get your pen ready because she's going to help us with some more ideas. It's always a little tough when, as a travel advisor, you've got your clients. A lot of us are solopreneurs, right? It's just us. What can we do to 
when we're traveling to make sure our clients are still being taken care of. And in, in those cases where we do want to take our office on the road with us, what are your tips? Well, hey, everybody. <laughs> Good to see y'all. All right. So, uh, you know, I always like to use the acronym KISS. Keep it simple, silly. <laughs> So it's not as difficult as most people want to make it. Um, I think it's like most things. Um, I try to follow the four P's in my mind, and that is preparation and planning, process, product, and people. Those are kind of the four things I think about that kind of go with the travel and trying to work as well as with a lot of things in our day to day. But to be more specific, when I talk about preparation and planning, um, I plan things well out in advance. <laughs> and so um, I've gotten accustomed to, I've got things planned out all the way through 2023 as an example. So I kind of have figured out when I'm gonna be out of the office, what I've got going on. So I can kind of guide my clients in that same vein, knowing I'm gonna be gone, make sure I've taken care of things in an appropriate time frame, so that while I'm gone, I really don't have a lot of people that would I need me per se. Right. The other thing about that is communicating. You know, communication is key for everything, but I communicate well ahead of time that I'm going to be out of the office. Um, that could be a number of different ways I do that, whether that's an out of the office on Facebook. I definitely try to put it in my um, email footer to say I'm about to be out of the office on these particular dates or this particular time. Um, I also um, try to uh, post it in different places um, and definitely in my out of office email, usually an out of office email goes back out that says uh, I'm out of the office, you know, touring or uh, escorting a great group or something of that nature to let people know I'm out. So if they send me an email, then they know. And I actually use that not only on just my business email for the travel agency, but I do it for my personal email, et cetera so that people are aware I'm not around, you know, because people have all kinds of ways to get in contact with you. Um, a part of that, when I talk about um, the preparation is a self preparation in mentality. I think that even if you're not traveling, we have a tendency to put a high amount of pressure on ourselves to perform that our clients are not putting on us. We have put it on ourselves. You know, as I've heard agents go, Somebody reached out to me this morning and they're looking for a quote on X, Y, Z. They're not leaving until, you know, late in 2022 or 2023, but I got to get this to them this afternoon. And it's like, huh? <laughs> I don't see that. My, my viewpoint is in that case is normal individuals. If you explain, um, you know, your scenario, as I will tell people, I have a queue and you're number seven in my queue. Or, you know, you'll get um, something to let you know when you've actually entered my queue. So, again, it's about preparation and not putting that self-pressure and letting your clients be aware of kind of your process, which takes me right into my next piece. Let me so, say something first before you get yeah, to the next one, though. Okay. That, that last point is huge because for me, I always, that, what you said, that self-pressure, is that what you called it? Yeah, That's where I always, I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to respond right away because yeah. I'm, they're wondering and they're where I'm at. And, you know, I get this kind of self pressure and I always, I always hear from my clients, wow, you respond so fast. Wow, yep. you always, thank you for, but I don't feel like I am. <laughs> Cause mm -hmm. if I can't get back to them within an hour, I feel like I'm, I'm failing them. So I and like see, And that, that's a that large part of a lot of people feel that way. They feel like I've got, it's just like, you know, your cell phone and text and things of that nature. Ding, oh, I got to answer it now. You know, somebody left me yeah. a message. I got to answer it now. It, you don't. <laughs> I mean, if you think about just your day, a lot of times you're doing stuff as, you know, in between things, you know, I'm running to get a cup of coffee. Oh, while I'm doing that, let me send so-and-so a text. Uh, da -da, you know, I've got to run out and get dry cleaning. Let me do such, such, such. You know, so you're kind of doing things in between, even in your own day-to-day -day activity. And so most of your clients are that way too. They're professional, they're working, they've got other things going on. You're not the only thing on their list. <laughs> and they're not the only ones on your list. So stop putting all that pressure on yourself. It's about communication and being prepared um, and having a plan. And then, as I said, having a process. You know, a part of my process is up front, my clients get an introduction email that 
talked about me and my business. It lets them know, here is how I operate. Here is my philosophy. One of my biggest philosophies is that, you know, I work to live. I don't live to work. I'm going to enjoy life. <laughs> so life is too short and I'm going to enjoy it. So I'm not going to be sitting in front of a computer 24 seven. It's just not going to happen. Um, and so you've got to respect that I need my time and my personal time, as well as I respect as a travel agent, as we all know, going on vacation lowers your pressure and your stress tremendously, yeah. even on that first day. So we've got to keep that in mind um, as a part of the process, set the expectations up front with each person that you um, engage with for business. It's a, uh, a handshake. It's a terms and conditions kind of thing of you doing business with me, me doing business with you. Here's how I do business. Here's what you should expect from me, so forth and so on. You know, as I tell all my clients, <laughs> I grew up in a household where my grandmama used to say, if somebody called my house after 10 o'clock PM, we got a problem. So That's I right. tell my clients the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, look, my my girlfriend is between 10 and 10. You don't call right. after 10 p.m. and you don't call before 10 p.m. But with text, I think a lot of people knew that growing up. But with text, oh, well, that's just for calls. I can still text. Mm -hmm. so you get these, these, I get texts at like one in the morning. Yep. You know, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> come on. But again, I bet you put the pressure on yourself to yep. address them. And see, when I get them, I just ignore them. Like, for instance, yeah. when I go to bed at night, I have my phone on do not disturb. I have my um, text so I can't hear them. I mean, that's my time. <laughs> Meaning I can't work 24 seven. And I and again, I let my clients know that. But a part of letting them know that is having a clear process for how you do your work. So that yeah. as an example, when my clients come into my queue, they get a series of emails to let them know here is where I am. Or, you know, it's a, a lot of times for all of us, it's about feeling like I'm getting a personal touch. So if you've got an email sequence of some sort that, you know, every couple of days they're getting something from you, it makes them feel like you're literally sitting there sending them an email every day. And if you can automate that and do it, then, you know, that's a great thing because all of mine are pretty much automated, but it lets them feel like I am doing something at the time and I may very well not be, you know, for instance, if somebody wants something for Dominican Republic, as an example, I can do it in my sleep. So it's like, it's not going to take right. me very long to send out a, you know, a quote. So again, process, got to have a process in place. Oh, and a part of that process kind of falls into um, another area of product. You've got to have the right products in place to support you, whether you're in your office or not at home and definitely when you're not at home. So as an example, a product that I use, of course, is candle, uh, Calendarly. I think people use uh, Asana. There are a couple of different ones that people use, but it gives a way for you to kind of set an expectation without you having to say anything. Because if you're using a particular calendar for people to schedule those consults with you, when they go to your calendar, they already see there's no space open. I could be out, you know, an actor or whatever case may be. There's no space open because I'm not available. So again, right. it goes with being available and using that product, they're able to see it without me having to literally say it, you know. Um, another product that I think is very important in that process as well is, you know, I have a bag that's my travel bag. It's always packed. I got a backpack. It's got my extra laptop in it. It's got extra cord in it. It's got um, um, SIM card in it. It's got um, a mouse batteries, because I did forget that one time, batteries for the mouse as an example, um, a notepad, it's got um, a little electronics bag with all my extra cords and everything else that go with it, um, extra headphone sets, um, it has um, an extra charger, um, extra earplugs, um, all of that. So all all those IT things, kit there. <laughs> exactly, well, that's what I'm saying. It's, you know, it's my office, it's my go away office. I mean, you know, when I yeah. get ready to go, that's one thing that I'm going to be grabbing is that bag. And it's already pre packed and it stays pre packed so that I don't have to worry about forgetting stuff. You know, one very important piece I think about that that um, has really come a lot is a way to have Wi Fi no matter where you are. And thinking about product, I, they used to call it Rome Man. Uh, where you could rent or purchase this um, Wi-Fi data um, apparatus that would allow you to have Wi-Fi no matter where you go. But I think they recently changed it. And I think when I looked it up earlier today, it was G Local Me is what they're calling it now. G, G as in girl, Local Me. But it used to be called Roman. Um, but having a, having a way to make sure you got that Wi-Fi. 
speaking of that, we back up a little bit to say, when we talk about planning and process, um, setting that expectation is so important because everybody doesn't travel all the time. Everybody doesn't travel internationally. So thinking about Wi-Fi, as we all know, <laughs> There are times when you get places and nothing works. I don't care what you do, nothing works. <laughs> um, and so you have to, again, set that expectation with your clients that even if I've got a wrong man, even if I plan to be on Wi-Fi, something could happen. It's just a part right. of life. So again, that's about that process and planning. And then my last P, which I'm sure all of us know about. First, though, yeah, yeah. You got something funny on your, on your IT um, equipment. So yeah. I... Uh, you learn the most interesting things when you travel with somebody. So I invited this friend on a cruise. And we're both workaholics, you know, so we're, we're going to work from the cruise. I'm like, yeah, just come. You know, you can work from the cruise. They got Wi-Fi. He comes. He starts unpacking his bag, and he sets up a full workstation. He packed a full screen, like oh, wow. 20 inches, 20 inches or, or, or bigger screen. He had the keyboard. He had everything set up, a full workstation. You think I, I just bring my laptop, you know, and all the it's not all the stuff that you right. bring. I gotta add to my list, I think. But uh, I bring my laptop and use that screen. He can't do that. He's got to have his full workstation. So I, 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 I can just, understand that. Wow, <laughs> I've done that at least once, but not in any kind of major long distance trip. Like if I'm going to my mom's house, I know I'm gonna be there a couple of days. I've definitely taken one of my monitors with me. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's a whole that's a whole nother level I never even considered. But I have seen they have these fold out monitors that attach to your laptop that I recently saw. I think it was an ad on Facebook, and mm -hmm. it just you have your little laptop, but it you slide this thing on, and then you exactly. open from side to side, and it you've yep. got your laptop screen, but you've got two more screens on either side. So exactly. to me, because I'm all about I'm more of a light packer. See, I'm mm -hmm. I'm from Peace Corps. When we went on the Peace Corps and we, you'd ask other volunteers who had already done it, what, what should I pack? The kind of running joke is a toothbrush. That's what everybody says. Just bring your toothbrush. They, they have everything here you need. Just bring your toothbrush. Different when you're traveling than moving and living somewhere. But yeah. I came from that where I, I'm, I'm kind of a light packer. Uh, mm. So that, bringing a whole monitor. I'm, I'm trying to get better life. at being a light packer. I'm, I'm not very good at it, but I, I, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, like I said, you know, the last P was definitely people, um, you know, having the right connections um, to be able to support you. One of the things that really um, we talk about all the time about our KHM family and how we're there to support um, and, and to help each other out. I can remember, I think when I was, you know, when I was on my way to Africa, actually, um, I have a client that is a pretty good client of mine. And of course, as it always happens, right, when you're getting ready to go out somewhere, that's when they want something. Well, she reached out to me with four requests. One of them was for a Disney um, trip for this holiday season. And I immediately thought to myself, yeah, you're a little late probably. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, I tried to get something done before I you know, was able to get out of here. Well, it didn't happen. Well, I went to our Pinnacle group um, and I just simply put a message out there and said, look, I need a Disney expert that probably can give me some um, help on this. I uh, told them what I was looking for. You know, it's uh, two adults, two kids. Here are the ages of the kids, so forth and so on. This is her budget range. Da, da 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 da. Can somebody help me out? I just basically need a quote. You know, if you want me to pay you something, just send me. You know, the cash app, whatever. I'll send it to you. But I need somebody to help me out here. I mean, within a matter of seconds, Josephine DiMaggio, um, Emily uh, Bookie. Uh, Jamie Turner, there were all these people that immediately like jumped in and they were like, you got her, you got her, you got her, you got her. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. <laughs> you know, and That's those awesome. People, like, really quick turn stuff around and send it to me and um, I got what I needed, which was basically there was nothing on ground, <laughs> in, on the grounds of Disney for them, um, and, but was able to at least send my client a communication on here's what I've been able to find or not find in the overall situation, which still kept her happy um, so that I could move forward because her other items weren't going to be until later in 2022. And I'd already told her I probably would be able to get those till later. So yeah. again, those people are important too. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming back on the show, Wanda. I'm so glad you're part of our team. You, you provide a, a different, unique sort of element and different and I don't know if we talked about this, but I feel like you're a project manager or something in another life, right? Because when we talk, 
you've got all these things that seem like project management, which I kind of got a taste of that in my career, not much, but I was I was kind of a on a on a, in a window looking in, I guess you said, and you say these words, I'm like, she must have done project management. She's organized. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that that's my uh, my thing. I do a lot of project management and process management. I work with a number of organizations in those regards. So yep, kind of in the blood. <laughs> awesome. Well, before we let you go, you do need to pick a number between one and fifty-three. And our next winner is gonna win this book written by our very own uh, Anita Pagliasso. And almost you know her, uh, this is her second book and it's from home base to powerhouse. So it's how to get your business to that next level. So what is your number? I need, I need that book. Can I remember what my number is? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 25 is my favorite number, so I'll go with 25. 25, great number. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you have a great holiday season. I know you're probably going to be traveling again soon and can't wait to hear more about that <laughs> when you get back. Thanks for thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, doll. It's so good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, too. All right, and we're going to wrap this up. Uh, but first, I do want to announce the winner for the first book because I have that uh, number here it was and I'm, I'm going to say your name wrong I know it but it's Twilla Hughes or unless it was spelled wrong Twilla Hughes but we're going to contact you don't worry about it and Anita's going to send you a copy of her first book and then now I am going to show you my favorite drink for the holidays it's super simple and um, what I love about it is the aroma that's that's what drew me to make the drink originally i had an aunt i've got it all set up behind me so i'll stand up here but i had an aunt uh over house always oh, smelled good during the holidays and i had to ask her why does it smell so good in here and she would get these um mulling spices in these little bags you can see that here you get this in like i think it's next to the tea section in your grocery store and she'd put a few of these in a pot with water and just and just boil it for aromatics but uh, she didn't actually do anything with it or drink it. It was just there. I said, do you drink it later? No, no, no. It's just for the scent. I'm like, well, that's a waste. So I decided to kick it up a notch. And so this was years later. But now I've been doing this at all my holiday parties. I do it for Thanksgiving. I do it for Christmas. I do it for New Year's because it's a, 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 my favorite holiday drink. You get some apple cider. Uh, now, these days, they've got a honey crisp apple cider it's made from honey crisp apples which are my favorite apple you can really only get it during this season so it's a great cider uh, there are different ones pick the one you like there's ones that already have spices in it um but it's it's the non-alcoholic version i don't get the, the alcoholic kind of cider i just get this so that if people don't want to drink alcohol uh, they can still just enjoy this and then you pour this into this is an instant pot uh, but you can put it in a crock pot you put it in your warm, on the warm setting. Start it about an hour before your party starts to get it going and pour some of that in there and then take your mulling spices. I've already been letting this um, sit here since the show started. I set it up just before the show started. So the aroma is already coming in. You can smell the apples, you can smell the spices, the cinnamon. And then you take your mulling spices bags. I like to put three, so I put two in already. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one in here. Um, because I like it, I like that spiced flavor. And then that's basically it. But starting an hour before, so it's already warmed up by the time they come in. When they enter that door, they're gonna feel that warm smelling, uh, holiday smell, just very welcoming. And then um, you have some mugs set up, or maybe some cups for them. And they can just pour it in as they like. And if there's kids, they can just pour it in. There's no alcohol in here. That's all it is. It's that simple. But I'm telling you, it's it's super delicious and warm like that. But if you want, I went over and got some rum. Uh, I think a dark rum or a spiced rum particularly works best for this. I got uh, the Sugar Island spiced rum, but there was one at the store that was an apple spiced rum. So do what you want. You know, some people do whiskey. You can you can have some options here if you want. But I'm going with rum today. Let uh, your guests pour the amount they want to pour in, because everybody has a different, you know, level, and some don't want to drink at all. So that's what I like about this too. It's a real versatile option for everybody. And then 
just pour some of this warm spiced apple cider into the mug and that's it. I know it's not a complicated drink or anything crazy, but I'm telling you, it's my favorite drink. And it's like I said, it's just the smell. Uh, it just makes everything feel so welcoming and it feels like the holiday season. And if you want to, you can put out some uh, cinnamon sticks and garnish it with that little stir stick or just for those who like a little extra spice. I wanna thank you all for joining me first time hosting this show i have to tell you i don't know how um carolyn does some of this she's actually the one managing the powerpoint uh and i never realized that before because you don't she doesn't really reveal that and i can't really tell that she's moving her hands or doing any of that stuff so uh for me that's kind of like patting you know what are you patting your head and rubbing your belly <laughs> doing both of those things so you probably seen how i kind of uh, had some uh, flubs there a little bit, but uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll be back on one of the segments in the future. Uh, Carolyn's going to be back next week, so be sure to tune in so you can uh, learn what the next prize is going to be, and you have to be present to win. So join every show this month so you can win one of these prizes. Uh, I want to thank our show sponsor, Apple Leisure Group, our segment sponsors, Travel Impressions, Celebrity Cruises, Delta Vacations, Royal Caribbean, Oceana Cruises, and Norwegian. I also want to thank Steve Ferry for uh, being on the show and giving us some of his insights. It's a complicated time to travel right now and having those are really helpful. So everyone take care and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season.